welcome to leaders of tomorrow's season 10 it's been 10 seasons of empowering you 10 seasons of bringing you the biggest expert voices to handhold and guide you i'm sananda jay Seelan. on the show tonight we have two voices joining us from the government first and foremost we have dr k sudhakar Minister of Health and Family Welfare and Medical Education, Government of Karnataka. He is talking to us about what makes Karnataka a great place to do business and what he feels today's entrepreneur's DNA should be to be successful. My second interview is with James Sangma, Cabinet Minister of Forest, Environment and Power, Government of Meghalaya. Also popularly known as one of the most soft-spoken ministers, he though takes a tough stance when it comes to the environment and his views on innovation for the environment and on the environment by India's small businesses. The one question that we all have that is on the top of everyone's mind is that in all of our living histories, we have come through the most challenging time ever in all of our living memories and histories, and that's the pandemic. And as a leader, as someone leading a portfolio as crucial as the one that you are, did you have time to react and you know think about what is happening, or which is just go, go, go from, from day one? and? What was that period like for you? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, I would like to thank ET now for uh, such a meaningful uh, event, especially for the budding entrepreneurs. And for your question, I think we were all taken by surprise. The entire world was taken by surprise, and so do we. Uh, Karnataka, in particular, uh, when I took over as uh, medical education minister, I had one portfolio that was in February uh, 6th, 2020. Uh, we started screening of the uh, passengers, international passengers from March itself. So we knew that this is going to be a pandemic. Uh, when we were learned from what happened in Wuhan in China. Uh, we knew that pandemic is coming and we need to prepare and gear up. But unfortunately, we had to handle, manage this pandemic with the inherited uh, kind of infrastructure system that we had because you need time to, you know, augment your infrastructure or human resource or anything. In a nutshell, if I have to tell you, uh, the five T principles uh, that we effectively implemented in Karnataka, that is uh, tracing, tracking, uh, testing, treatment, and the fifth uh, important one is the technology. Since uh, Karnataka and Bangalore in particular being a technological hub. So we utilized the technology to our best advantage uh, to mitigate this uh, pandemic. When we're talking about the pandemic, you know, there's a lot of attention that's being paid to say the Mumbai model of disaster management, of pandemic management. But the five T's that you're just talking about, is that the highlight of the Karnataka model? Because we've been very successful as well when it comes to handling the number of cases. Absolutely. Uh, we were the first state, Bangalore was the first city uh, to come up with the central dashboard to handle and uh, to understand uh, the entire bed management system, uh, the patients who are in isolation, who are in quarantine, everything was in the dashboard. And later the government of India also, at Delhi, they established the similar dashboard. We have tested more than 7 crore uh, people in Karnataka till date. Uh, similarly, we have vaccinated more than 11 crore. So it is more than any 
two, three countries in uh, Europe put together. So, similarly, uh, we ensured that augmentation of health infrastructure also, like we had, uh, just to give you a, a short snap, uh, we had about two and a half to three thousand uh, beds of ICU only. That is what we inherited. Uh, in a short span of 10 to 12 months, we ensured that we augmented it to almost uh, seven to 8,000 ICU beds. This is the state where we can say we have the highest number of medical colleges, be it allopathic, ayurvedic, homeopathy. We have all uh, facets of uh, medical education, different disciplines. In terms of uh, uh, augmenting the health infrastructure, uh, the time, uh, the speed and the scale, these were the three important facets. Uh, because of which we, we timely we reacted, we responded, and the speed in which we needed to act, we acted in that speed only, and the scale, because you saw from first wave to second wave, nobody expected it. Yeah. The kind of oxygen required, we have, the world has never witnessed yeah any other infection, any other disease. Yeah. So this was uh, one of the situation and nobody anticipated. Today, every hospital in Karnataka, we have not just oxygen generating capacity plants, we have also established oxygen storage plants. Mm -hmm. So we are well geared up, we are well prepared for even the future pandemics, if at all. The past two years have been extremely challenging for small businesses. Your advice for our entrepreneurs here, and this is going to get telecast on ET now as well. Your advice for an entrepreneur watching this about how they can also take care of their mental health. Karnataka has been the pioneer in the mental health. The stress, especially during COVID times, uh, it has not left any profession so as the businessmen also. So definitely businessmen need to be uh, taking their mental health seriously. As a doctor, I feel that uh, you should, one should take uh, time at least half an hour in a day for themselves. Minimum 30 minutes to 40 minutes, at least brisk walking or do yoga or do whatever kind of exercise where you sweat. You have to sweat for at least 30 to 40 minutes and do a kind of meditation to discover yourself. And that will really uh, transform oneself. And uh, if it has really helped me, I'm sure uh, it will help every one of you here. My last question, uh, since you were talking about health and health tech and Karnataka and Bangalore has a lot of health tech startups. Are you happy with the kind of innovation you're seeing? Would you like to see more? What is holding these businesses back and your advice on that? Yeah, it's, it's a niche area. It was a niche area. But all of a sudden, it is growing exponentially. It has a huge scope. Uh, right from uh, uh, the machines, robotics. We are using robotics in medical sciences. Today, the surgeries are being carried by robots, robotic technology. There are a lot of scans. And similarly, tele-ICU, telemedicine. So there is a lot of technology and innovations that can really go up. And Bangalore can be a, a great de international destination. Uh, our youngsters are doing, uh, I think there is a scope to do more. And we can compete. Uh, with uh, the leading uh, countries of the world and Bangalore is the right platform according to me because uh, there is more than one third of all startups in the entire country is in Bangalore alone. So you have a right ecosystem to support you. You have good educational institutions, you have good research R&D centers, uh, you have all Ayush related institutions. 
So it is like a complete, holistically if you think, uh, for the health sector and medical education, uh, for innovators, this is the right place and there is a lot of scope uh, this city and this state can provide. Okay, and that's definitely something to leave all our entrepreneurs with. Shri Sudhakarare, thank you very much, sir, for coming this evening. Thank you so much for speaking with our entrepreneurs. A round of applause for our chief guest this evening. Thank you once again for your time. I'm going to slip into a short break on that note. On the other side, I have a second big ministerial voice talking to us about the importance of sustainability for India's entrepreneurs. Stay tuned. Welcome back with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow. My second big interview tonight is with James Sangma. He's talking to me about why sustainability has to be the cornerstone of everything that India's entrepreneurs do today, what small businesses can do to ensure that sustainability remains at the core of the business, and his advice and his trends that he's calling out for India's entrepreneurs. Listen. Really PPP and what aspect or what area you feel it occupies when it comes to uh, the environment and sustainability. How can private industry be encouraged and encouraged even more to work more closely with government, with representatives like yourself, with spokespeople like yourself when it comes to innovating in this space? I think uh, what's positive uh, about the scenario in today's world is that uh, PPP, you know, at one point of time, uh, uh, the, the bureaucracy or the government maybe would have been very averse to it. Uh, but today, PPP in other sectors has taken flight. Like, for example, in Meghalaya, we have a very successful PPP model with, uh, uh, in the health sector. So um, we face a shortage of doctors, we face a shortage of um, manpower. And uh, so we've gone into this PPP with uh, uh, many uh, you know, NGOs, uh, institutions, uh, which are nonprofit, and uh, they are running some of our PHCs, uh, the primary health centers and some of our sub centers and uh, very successfully. So, um, so you can see that the model is working, the acceptability is there. In the sector of uh, the environment, this is something I think, um, uh, when you want the private sector to come in, uh, there is uh, something that that is something that we need to work upon because um, uh, you know this is purely from a very social responsibility angle that people would want to partner. There is no um, you know um, economic model, so to say, in uh, in something uh, that is related to mitigation of climate change or you know. Uh, related to environment related issues so um, but yes I think that the model being so successful as a government we are looking at and reaching out to the private sector to come and uh, be involved and as I just mentioned it's not just the private sector uh, but also community so I think the community also needs to be actively involved and uh, it's only in their active involvement will they also realize the sense of, um, uh, you know, the sense of belonging, the sense of the responsibility. Uh, so I think that really works out well. 
For entrepreneurs who are watching today's interview, James, my question to you is as, um, you know, how do you ensure that sustainability and, you know, focus on the environment and being compassionate for the environment and conscious really of the impact that you have on the environment as businesses? How do entrepreneurs ensure that it becomes a part of the core business ethos? It's not just a box that you're taking off. What's your advice on that? I think that uh, uh, today, businesses, governments have to take that as your core value driver. And um, that's what we are prototyping right now. So I'm, uh, we as a state are working on the environment state. And I just want to just, so that um, um, we, we really can't uh, force anyone to take it up, right? We can only make them aware of the pitfalls and dangers that lie in the way that we are moving forward, which is uh, extremely uh, extractive, extremely, um, insensitive to the environment you just can't say that um, you know the corporate houses uh, you know you only take care of your own shareholders i think that that is an attitude which needs to change and we need to look at our customers we need to look at our clientele not just our shareholders we need to look at community where everyone you and me we all have to live in that we need to look in to the environment, the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, uh, and have that sense of responsibility. So environment will eventually become, but when it becomes, will it be too late? I think that's, that's the question. So we need to start now, I think, because the time for us to act is now. Later on, we may realize uh, the folly of it all, but it will be too late by then. There are some set SDG goals James, and while India, of course, has made that commitment that we meet, that are you happy with the trajectory that we are on when it comes to meeting those goals? Do you feel more can be done by companies, by individuals, by entrepreneurs, by small businesses? And if so, what needs to be done? Yeah, in terms of uh, the economy, yes, um, I think, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, there are certain uh, you know, ups and downs that we look at. It's always uh, a wave that's always up and down but um, I think uh, if you ask me about the environment and whether we're doing enough um, we are signatory to the Paris Accord and um, we have been uh, trying to uh, as a country move towards renewable energy uh, you know honorable transport minister I think Mr. Nitin Gadkari mentioned about converting all our vehicles to EV uh, by I think 2030 um, you know, and we have set very, very ambitious goals in terms of solar energy and other renewable forms of energy for us and reduce the dependence on um, on carbon-based energy, which is uh, coal, thermal energy and stuff like that. Um, so I think that um, the trajectory is uh, extremely, uh, you know, um, uh, I think in the right direction. Um, but I think a lot more needs to be done. And uh, I say that uh, because, um, not because as, as, um, as rhetoric, but uh, I feel that uh, genuinely this is, is something, an area where we still uh, need to bring about a lot of awareness because um, uh, constantly we are under so much of threat. We see that in our own state where uh, that paradox between development and the the econ uh, the environment, uh, ecology and the economy, I think that is something that we keep struggling with. So the paradox is, um, if you want to have growth and uh, you know if, if you're looking at development, that comes at a certain cost, which is the environment, and um, that paradox I think is everywhere all across the world. So uh, even India faces that same thing. So we are looking at uh, growing the economy, but then that will come at a certain cost. So that is where our idea of the environment state, where it can be a win-win for everybody, the government, uh, the, the industry, and also uh, our people and the environment. So, yeah, so I guess that's how we should take things forward. I mean, I sincerely believe that. James, what do you mean when you say environment state? The idea of the environment state that uh, we as a state are prototyping right now is, uh, is an economic framework, basically. And uh, this is a framework for governments uh, and for nations. 
uh, to sort of mainstream the uh, the environment and the people as the center of the markets uh, of the economy and uh, you know development so um, now what do you mean by uh, the environment state i think it's um, it's an economy which is born out of um, this uh, paradigm uh, of um, uh, you know of livelihoods uh, which we uh, will be designing that are based on conservation sustainability and climate action so um, just to maybe illustrate uh, i can give an example of ecotourism and uh, ecotourism is uh, one such uh, means by which uh, you know we we can have livelihoods that are based on conservation um, so uh, this is uh, we are uh, very successfully uh, having that in our state so um, uh, i think that it's um, you know uh, very uh, that way in terms of sustainability and also in terms of uh, the idea of conservation climate action is working extremely well and um, uh, so uh, this is just one part of it just to illustrate but there are other ways and means of um, you know how we um, have this economic framework because um, at the end of the day the economy has to be driven by something so uh, carbon farming is one such thing and uh, there are so many um, green financial instruments these days uh, be it uh, green bonds um, carbon credits and stuff like that so these kind of ecosystem services are there which can be monetized and it is being done all across the world it's not something that we are uh, you know reinventing the wheel we're just reimagining how things can be and that is what the environment state as an economic framework aims to do uh, to bring about such kind of uh, 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 paradigm shift to um, nature first economy all right james so good having you here on Thank the you, show Sananda. thanks a lot out of time in tonight's show if you have any feedback for us do let us know our contact details are coming up as we speak thanks for watching have a good night Thank you.